Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the first and last days of the week for any given date. Today's question comes from Matt in Detroit, Michigan, one of my silver members. Proof that yes, the silver members do still get their questions answered. It's not just the golden platinums all the time. If I see a good question, I'll answer it, even if you're not a member. Matt says, when calculating payroll, I need to know how to figure out the first day of the week for any date. How can I do that in Access? Well, Matt, you can do this in a form field or you can do this in a query with some simple date math. Let me show you how. First up, if you haven't watched my date math video, go watch this first. This explains how dates work in Access. A day basically has a value of one. So if you take a date and add one to it, that's tomorrow. Add seven, that's next week and so on. So go watch this video and it explains how that works. And also go watch my weekday video. This explains how the weekday function works. It returns a number from one to seven based on the day of the week that a particular date falls on. Go watch both of these videos first. These are on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. They're both free. Go watch them, then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got customers. And every customer has a customer sense field. Well, let's say I want to figure out what the first day of this week is. Just basically, I got a table with a whole bunch of dates in it. So we'll use that one. So create query design. And let's bring in here my customer table. Where are you? Customer T right there. Close that. And I'm just going to bring in that customer sense field. There it is. Now, because I don't want to have to type in customer sense for each of my calculations here, I'm just going to alias that. We're going to call it something else. We're going to say create a field called D, which is nice and short, right? Put a colon there and then put customer sense. Let me zoom, zoom in. I almost said zoom in. <laughs> Let me zoom in so you can see that. Shift F2. There it is. D colon customer sense. That's creating an alias. It says I'm creating a new field called D and it's just going to be whatever customer sense is. And if I run this now, there you go. It's just easier to type in D and in in the rest of my calculations, right? That typing in customer sense every time. Okay, so as we learned from the prerequisite video, if I want to find out the weekday of that, all I have to do is say, let's call it WD weekday, is going to be the weekday of D. Right, let's zoom in so you can see that one too, right? Create a new field, another new field called WD, weekday. And that's going to be the weekday function of D. And let's see what that looks like now. Boom, there you go. There's all your day of the weeks. So, for example, this is my birthday, in fact. 10 22 falls on a Sunday this year, which is a one. Okay, now let's take a look at ye old calendar. So if I know that, for example, October 23rd falls on a Sunday, and that's a value of one from the weekday function. Well, if I take that weekday function and subtract it from the date and then add one to it, I get the first day of that week. For example, the 23rd returns a one, right? So if I subtract one and then add one to it, it's its own first day of the week. Okay. Now, if I take this Wednesday here, if I send it the 26th of October, well, that's one, two, three, four, right? That, that's going to return a four from the weekday function. So if I subtract four, one, two, three, four, and then add one to it, it puts me right there on the 23rd. So that's the way that we calculate the first day of the week for any date. So come on in here, design view. And I'm going to say next field over, right? First day of the week is going to be whatever my date is, D, subtract the weekday plus one. Let me zoom in so you can see that. All right, take your date, subtract whatever the weekday is, right? Two, four, eight, well, not eight, one through seven. <laughs> then add one to it. Hit OK, and then run. And there's all of the first days of the week for all of these dates. So there's my birthday, right? It's its own day of the week. Let's check this one. How about uh, September 23rd? All right, September 23rd is on a Friday, so it should come back with this 18th as the first day of that week. And yep, there it is, 18th. Now, now that you know how to do this, the last day of the week, in case you need to figure out the last day, is very simple. Just add six to that. 
So again, we'll come in here, design view. And I'm gonna make these so you can see them all. Slide that out just a little bit. Okay, right here, right? Last day of the week is gonna be the first day of the week plus six. That's it, run it. There you go, there's the last day of that week. In case you need to put up like a, a week ending date, for example. All right. All right, there's your calculations in case you want to copy that down or whatever, right? Where D is any date. Okay. Just plug those in. And you could do the same thing in a form if you want to, if you don't want to have to make a query out of this. If you're in a form, for example, you can come in here, design view. And we'll just make a copy of that guy, delete the label. Slide this over here. Open up its properties, right? We'll come in here and we'll go first day of week. Now we have to use the customer sense though. So it's going to be equals customer sense minus the weekday of customer sense plus one, just like that. And you can see, if I zoom in, you can see why I like to replace that with D in my queries to keep things simple and small. But in the form, you don't have that luxury unless you want to make another D field, which is kind of silly. All right, save that, and I'm going to make this gray just because I want the user to know, hey, you can't edit that. That's something that I'm calculating. Okay, close it, save it, open it. There's your first day of the week. That's how you can do calculated field in the query and directly in a form. And this works for simple calculations, but if you got really crazy calculations that involve multiple fields and stuff, it's better to do them in queries and then use that query as the record source for the form instead of trying to do all kinds of nuts, nutso stuff right here. If you want to learn more about all this crazy date time function stuff in Access, I have two classes that cover pretty much everything you want to know about dates and times, Access Expert 27 and its follow-up, Access Expert 28. All kinds of different stuff you could do with dates and times and calculations and moving parts and molecular structures and what are you erasing, a barn? No. <laughs> Who gets that movie quote? Who gets it? Probably we're raised in a barn with all the rest of the primitives. Okay, so that's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now. If you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on.
And also, if you like level one, level two is just one dollar. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.